These past few days have seen a wealth of controversy around the open source community, specifically around Node IPC. To keep things brief, numerous popular applications such as Vue.js and Unity utilize and rely upon this program. In a recent update, the manager of this program, Brandon Nazoki Miller, purposefully added protestware against the Russians and Belarusians as a form of support for Ukraine. Said protestware would completely wipe drives by replacing all files with heart emojis, and would activate if the system was on an IP from Russia or Belarus. Though targeting the Russian government for invading Ukraine is not without merit, the immediately disastrous results of this distribution, and the effects sure to reverberate throughout the programming world, dwarf any good to be had. The main issue with this malware injection is just how untargeted it is. Hundreds, if not thousands of programs utilize Node IPC in some form or another, many of which for civilian, personal, or just benign use. Military targets will undoubtedly be affected, but so too will countless innocent Russians and Belarusians, along with anyone who set their VPN to those regions. Some people spin this as a positive, saying that agitating the Russian citizenry will make it more likely they'll rise up and topple the regime, as though they aren't already trying. It may come as a shock to some, but issuing punitive measures against those with the misfortune of living in a dictatorship won't bring them over to your side, it'll just push them into your opponents. Finally, this scorched earth tactic of targeting anyone and anything on the enemy side is especially ironic given Russia's heavy use of such methods in the past. But then again, we aren't dealing with a particularly moral or righteous actor here. Writing malware to target a foreign government is not uncommon, and while the morality of creating such a program is questionable at best, there are better and worse ways of doing so. Whereas Node IPC certainly falls into the latter, one piece of malware that was somewhat well executed is Stuxnet. Nuclear proliferation, especially amongst rogue nations like Iran, generally isn't looked well upon. To address the issue of Iran developing nuclear weapons, the American and Israeli intelligence agencies allegedly developed malware called Stuxnet. The program worked by infecting computers that controlled nuclear centrifuges, then rapidly adjusting rotor speeds to cause internal damage. Stuxnet was also extremely targeted in its deployment and activation, only targeting computers from a specific company with a specific OS, running motors at a specific frequency. If you weren't a jank Iranian centrifuge, Stuxnet wouldn't have affected you. Because of its design and implementation, a substantial portion of Iran's nuclear refinement infrastructure was crippled, with no real effect outside of the intended target. In stark contrast to Node IPC, Stuxnet targeted approach was highly effective, and while these two programs make for a good case study on how not to write malware, they both cast a broad and concerning shadow. Once Stuxnet had been isolated and understood on a cursory level, variants and mutations of the program began to spring up, their usage much less noble than dismantling nuclear facilities. The Pandora's box of Stuxnet had been opened, and we've had to deal with the resultant chaos ever since. In the same vein, some 2-bit programmer adding malware to their distro is now just a thing. Whereas free and open source software has been gaining prominence and proving its worth in recent years, there is now legitimate concern and doubt in the space. The full effect of Brandon Nozoki Miller's moral grandstanding has yet to be felt, but if Stuxnet is anything to go by, it's nothing to look forward to. Thanks for reaching it to the end. Let me know what you think should happen to Miller and how you think the open source space will be affected by this development. Subscribe if you want more analyses and video essays like this as well. Take care.